Hello everyone, this is MMA Interesting Prospects Podcast. Today our guest is Canon Swanson, who will be fighting on LFA 181. Hello, uh, Canon, how are you? Doing good, how about yourself? I'm good, thanks. You will be fighting in the featherweight bout against uh, Curtis, Curtis Ellis. So if you can tell me, how do you feel uh, before your LFA debut? Um, I feel I feel pretty good. Um, it's been a great camp and I got a, a great team. That's also like in camp at the same time. You got Quang Lee on the same card, Griffin Perriott and Mitchell Wilson. So I got three of my teammates around my size that are fighting on the same card. So, um, yeah, feeling ready. And what do you think about the, this opponent? Because because he's uh, he's two and two in MMA, but he's also got some boxing experience, actually a long amateur career. So what do you think about uh, Kurt Ellis? Yeah, Kurt Ellis. Uh, he's, he's got he's got a lot of experience. I mean, he's got like thirty plus fights, um, and he's and you can just tell he's a he's kind of got it. You know, he he doesn't really like care. He he wants to fight. So I think it it'll be a great a great matchup. I'm I mean like the way that Curtis fights and the experience he has, it's a great matchup for me. And this kind of opponents sometimes are the the, the most dangerous when they don't care oh, they sure. can go for for the finish. So it can be some some challenging 100%. stuff. I, mean. I don't think really any of his fights have gone the distance either. So he either gets a finish or gets finished. So. And you are uh, right now uh, just 22. And did you like uh, thought that you can uh, fight in your second bout in such a big organization like uh, LFA? Uh, say that one more time. Uh, you, you are uh, 22 years old. And uh, did you think before that you can fight in your second pro bout in such a big promotion like LFA? Oh, for sure. I mean, I've been, I had my first amateur fight around two years ago. Uh, but before that, um, I've wrestled folk style wrestling ever since I was five years old. So, like the competition side of things, I'm very experienced in that. Is stepping on the mat one on one competition, and definitely fighting for LFA. It is a big deal. It's I'm super fortunate, super blessed to be fighting on LFA here in Mystic Lake. Is it a, a one a one five uh, fight deal for you? Ah, uh, yeah, just just a one fight deal right now. So, so maybe with with uh, very good performance, you will get uh, another opportunity soon. Oh, for sure, for sure. And and because because you are fighting uh, against this kind of po- opponent, also the there is a chance for for like uh, very very good finish from your side, like like maybe some crazy submission. Yeah, I got a few up my sleeve. I mean, I got I got finishes that we work on every day and. That I just find too. So I know, I know that's what I'm going for is it's entertainment first, you know, and to, and, and a stage like this, it's, you got to put on a good performance, a good dominant showcase or a cool finish to get your career rolling, get the momentum going. So yeah, that's definitely what I'm looking for. When I was uh, watching your fights, actually, I believe it was uh, your last amateur bouts. You won by uh, Tari Plata on topology. Yeah. It is <laughs> called uh, like this. And to be honest, I'm fan for for many years, but I didn't like see any, any like Tari Plata in MMA before. No, there's not very many of them ever hit, and it's such a, it's a good move. I don't know why it's not used more often, but. And did did you like uh, t- train this move uh, for 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 maybe not this fight but overall to use it in in MMA fight or is just uh, like you trained it at it as the grappling technique um, and you didn't uh, like want to to use it? Oh yeah, in that last fight I I had it. Um, funny thing about that fight is I was supposed to fight uh, my pro debut there, but my opponent had a seizure right before weigh-in, so they. Um, got an amateur to step up who also lost his opponent. It happened to be the same weight class. So, but yeah, that that move is it's not something I like train or drill. It's just like something that's in the transitions of the jujitsu flow, in a sense. Because if it's there, it's there. I mean, if you get a kimura, a dorsal kimura. I mean, people, there's so much. There's so many submissions you can do from. It's just all about the transitions, and if it's there, it's there. If it's not, just move on to the next one. 
but also I think that from from like a fan's perspective, when 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 you as the fighter, uh, like are, uh, when you are doing something like this, the fans will remember you because it's not another like rear naked or like guillotine choke, but it's a submission that never really really uh, happens. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, and if we can talk about your beginnings in, in the sport, uh, what was the, the like main reason behind uh, training uh, MMA and decided to to go as the as the pro? That's actually that's a long story, but I'll I'll start it up here. Um, so I wrestled my whole life, um, and about my senior year in high school, I mean I I started like I guess a little before that I loved watching UFC and watching all that. And I kind of grew an interest in it, in it. And so I went to college at North Dakota State University to wrestle for one year. And it was during the COVID year. And kind of just everything was shut down. We really didn't get to compete at all. And so I made it through that year. And then I just started after the season, I started going to the, the martial arts gym in Fargo and just fell in love with it there and decided to quit wrestling and continue to pursue that and and the rest is history now i'm here i graduated school i moved down to uh, minneapolis now i turned out of the academy in brooklyn center so my career started in fargo and it's currently in brooklyn center here minnesota and after uh, when you were like fighting in a amateur bout do you thought that you will become a pro fighter or, or you, did you want to just to do some amateur fights and then do something else with, with your life. Yeah, to be honest, I was I was like, uh, you know, I'll do I'll do an amateur fight or two, see if I'm see if I'm really about it. You know, you you have guys walking into gyms all the time saying they want to fight, they want to fight, and then you know they're gone in a week or two. But I I stayed committed. I was really committed to it. Coach brought up an opportunity. I was like, you know what? We'll see. We'll see how it is. I mean. And then the feeling I broke my hand, my first, my first ever bout first minute in, I won the fight still. And then, uh, I just was like, you know what, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing this and see how far we can go. Uh, and if you can tell a, um, a little more about your, your, uh, your camp that you are right now uh, uh, training with in Minnesota. Oh yeah. That's a great. Um, so. My coaches um, every day are Greg Nelson, um, Andy Grant, and Nat McIntyre. I mean, Greg Nelson, uh, Rose Namunas fights this weekend. Um, she was she was um, here at the beginning of probably like six weeks ago. And so her and Pat were there running, or Pat was running practice for a while. So, I mean, Greg, my, Coach Greg is coach, Brock Lesnar, um, Rose Namunas, um, Sean Shirk, and then countless other UFC guys, Bellator guys. So his knowledge is off the charts. And then the the training partners I have um, off the charts too. It's insane. The, the room is full of professional guys who are, you know, fighting for LFA, guys that are on the verge of the UFC, guys that are in the UFC. So yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's very good. I got, a, got, I got a lot of looks and a lot of tough rounds for sure. It's probably the, the the best team in in Minnesota, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And also the names that you are mentioned are like uh, Brock Lesnar, Sean Sherk, or Rose. It's like the yeah. in the like their times. Of course, Ro Rose is fighting right now, but it's uh, like top of the tops. Oh, for sure, yeah. And it's not like you. I mean, it is a well-known gym, but it's not like it's not like a, a Kill Cliff or American Top Team or the MMA Lab or Syndicate or Extreme Couture. Like, it's it's an under the radar gym, but in the Midwest here, like it's solid. And when you are in the training camp, do you have a like uh, the the thing in your training that that you don't like to do? It can be. Uh, I mean the the maybe resting part, maybe striking part. Do you have the this one area that you uh, know that you have to be focused on, but you maybe don't really like? I mean, I love it all: grappling, striking, and mixing it all together. I think I do it really well. Is mixing it all together, 
I mean, the striking days, we, we focus a lot on grappling and we do a lot of striking too. I mean, there's nothing that I don't, don't like, um, necessarily. There's things that suck for sure, but, uh, no, I, I like it all. There's, I feel like my strong suit is mixing it all up. I'm not just a wrestler. I'm not just a striker. I'm a, I'm a mixed martial artist and I feel like I do a pretty good job at mixing it up. And also, I think that it's worth to mention your overall, uh, like, finishing abilities, that you are, like, a true finisher. You are not, like, mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, of course, that you would be able to, to fight for 15 minutes, but you are always, uh, like, looking for, for the finish, well, what I think that is one of the most important thing in MMA. Absolutely. I mean, that's what everyone wants to see, right? And if you finish your guy, the sooner you're out of there, the less, the less, uh, injuries that can happen you know it's like kind of like a bank robbery you kind of want to get in and out of there and get the paycheck yes definitely the like brain damage is <laughs> no needed yeah but if you need to go 15 minutes so be it that's that's what needs to be done uh, when would you uh, where would you like to see yourself in let's say three years in 2027 three years get another hopefully around another seven to 12 fights in three years. I mean, that's pretty active. Um, but I, I could see myself being on the, in the UFC or right on the verge of the UFC at that point, depending on how uh, my fights go um, and how life goes, you know, who knows what happens, but I can, I could definitely see myself for sure on the verge of the UFC or in the UFC. Probably it's worth like, uh, taking many fights uh, when you are young, like getting experience not mm -hmm. to be when, uh, because there are something, uh, something like cases like this, when the fighter is five, or, five and over six and all, and he, he actually is not really experienced and he goes to the UFC and something bad is happened. And sometimes the, the fighter will have a problem to go back to the UFC. So sometimes there is a good thing to get experience outside of UFC uh, like uh, fighting against like uh, different styles and then go go to do you to the UFC but of course there are like when opportunity comes is probably also like really really tempting to to take it no oh, absolutely you see that you see that all the time in on these guys that are you know six and oh seven and oh and they're in the UFC and you know they've just steamrolled everybody but then they get challenged for the first time um you, like that I could see that if you're a little bit older, like if you're you're near your late 20s, early 30s, like you need to get the ball rolling, you know, but I'm in my early 20s right now. There's there's no rush, you know, but I can understand where guys like if you get an offer to go fight in the UFC, like who's really going to say no. But there was an example that this past weekend, this guy was 6-0 UFC, really good, really good wrestler, dominated the first round the second round did really good and then got absolutely beat up the third round against a very experienced guy but yeah there's no there's no rush for me that's why i'd say i need i need the experience you don't want to be rushed in because if you go if you go there go to the ufc it's a lot harder to get back into it once you're out Yes, yes, definitely. And do you do you plan um, uh, in the future to go to uh, one fifty five? Um, we'll see. I mean, I definitely have the frame and build for it. I'm tall. Um, I'd imagine as I get older, I'll probably put on a little bit more weight. Um, but yeah, definitely, I could definitely see it happening, but I just don't know when. And of course, the the UFC it's like the the biggest biggest organization, biggest brand in in the world of MMA. But in if you in the meantime would get a, an a opportunity from a other promotion like PFL, maybe one, would you be also uh, would you consider also th this kind of of uh, contract with with one of these organizations? Oh, absolutely. I would I would definitely consider that. Um, yeah, for sure great promotions there especially fighting in one championship you're fighting in thailand it's and i'm young too i don't have responsibilities i don't have wife or kids and stuff to take care of so like a travel like traveling like that would be something i would i would love to do maybe in fighting in uh in the middle east out there that'd be cool too
it's, it's probably like great adventure for, for the fighter to go on the other part of the, the world and fighting yeah. in front of like many, many people. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that, that'd be something I'd look into for sure. Are you overall a fan of uh, like watching MMA fights, UFC fights? Or you ju just like focus on your training and, and not really uh, watching uh, many of the fights? No, I watch fights all the time. All the time. Muay Thai, MMA. Um, every every weekend. The, I usually watch the one championship live stream in the morning. Um, if LFA's got an event uh, and I'm not busy on Friday night or something, I'll throw that on. Especially UFC, I watch every weekend when they have a card. So yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of the sport too. So, do you have a, a fight right now that you are really like looking for? A fight I'm looking for. Uh, like looking forward to 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 watch from the US. Oh, looking forward to watch. Oh yes, I mean, my favorite fighters are. I'm really excited to see Charles Oliveira versus Armon. Um. I mean, Dustin Poirier just fought. I was really looking forward to that one. Dustin Poirier is one of my favorite fighters. Um, there's another. I want to see uh, Diego Lopez. I love watching him fight too. Now he's super entertaining. Um, and then Rose this weekend. The, yes, the, Diego Lopez has this like opportunistic appro approach to to fighting. He can like submit you. He, he can knock you out. So so this this is the the kind of fighter that everybody everybody likes. Yes, for sure. Uh, and uh, what do you think about uh, Rose uh, fighting in uh, flyweight division? I think it's I think it's awesome. I mean, look what she did at the strawweight division. I mean, she beat the the two best women in that division twice. She beat Whaley twice, beat Joanna twice. I mean, she she stamped it. She's like, she's the queen there. And now she's going up a weight, and she's going to do the same thing. So it's really, I think it's a great move. It I spices agree. it up a little bit. I agree because she did everything uh, in one fifteen. Uh, one fifteen. So right now she can like choose choose another like challenges and maybe mm -hmm. flyweight uh, like title will, will like opportunity to take it also will appear. I hope so. She can get it done. I mean, everybody knows Rose is Thug Rose. She can do it. <laughs> and also uh, in in. Probably uh, last week, the two big big boxing bouts were announced, and I have a like question about your opinion about them. It's uh, first first it's uh, Mike Tyson against Jake Paul, and second one is uh, Nate Diaz against Jorge Masvidal. What do you think about them, and who do you think will will win in these fights? Yeah, boxing. See, that's the one thing I don't pay much attention to is boxing actually, but I I heard it I. Either, yes, yeah, yes. I hear these fights. I hear these fights. I mean, Tyson and Jake Paul. I mean, come on now. Is it going to be a real fight? Probably. Is it? Is it going to be overhyped? I think so. I think Nate Diaz and Masvidal. That's a cool one. Are they doing? Are like they doing gloves or like bare knuckle boxing? No, no, boxing with gloves. Okay. Um, I mean, that's the one people want to watch. I feel like people want to watch that more than. The actual fans would rather watch that. Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, it just seems like a like no one's gonna really take that one seriously, in my opinion. It it probably would be more interesting if it would happen like a few years ago when Mike Tyson would uh, was like fifty, because right now yeah. fifty eight is is probably a little bit too too much. I Mike Tyson has nothing to nothing to win, nothing to prove. I, I feel like, I mean, what does he have to prove? Like, everybody knows you're a killer, dude. I don't, I don't see why you have to go out and fight now. But yes, but it it it, it is on Netflix, so it de definitely, uh, definitely will get many many like views because yeah, of I guess uh, because of platform. Yeah, if you see a big big paycheck, I mean, it's probably pretty hard to say no to that. 
Uh, and uh, also about MMA, because you said that you are a fan of a fan of uh, watching the fights. So what is like uh, one moment in MMA that you were, were excited as the fan? Like maybe fight, maybe maybe some like rivalry between between the fighters. Um, I think the one one of the most exciting ones was uh, when Adesanya knocked out Pereira. I remember. I remember everyone's reaction to that, and especially when uh, Leon knocked out uh, Usman. Um, those ones, I, I'm a big fan of Leon too, and just the story he has. Um, I like the the Poirier and uh, McGregor kind of trilogy they had going on. Um, what else? And Pereira moving up, I think he could be. He already has something special with all the guys he's beaten. Every every guy he's like faced has been a champion or is a champion. Yes, his career is one of the probably ever because yeah. it's, it would be really hard, uh, hard to replicate what he's doing. Absolutely. And I have a one hypothetical question. If you can like take one skill from any fighter in the world and add to your current skill set, it can be like any, anything, any tool from any fighter. What what kind of like uh, tool would you like to take? Um, I want to say like all, Charles Oliveira's like grappling or like his jujitsu, like his, how slick he is. For some reason that I just find super, super cool. And like fun to watch is the way that he kind of just moves. I mean, there's so many people I could choose from, but that's the first one that comes to my mind. It's it's a very very like broad question because you can like go from from like many perspectives as maybe some striking right. tool, maybe Another some one. grappling. Yeah. Leon Leon Edwards like calmness when he's like striking his fluidity. That's something too. Definitely definitely that Leon's like. Just the way he he moves, everything seems so fluid and efficient. I mean, even when he's kicking, they have the like the slow mo videos. That there's no like, it doesn't seem like there's any effort. He's not grunting or nothing. He's just super super calm. So yeah, that's one thing. I think that also his story is quite interesting one though, because for many years he was quite underappreciated. Like many mm -hmm. many fans like didn't like him. Probably UFC didn't didn't like him, and right now he's a champion. He defended the belt, and he's a really big star. So it's probably like right now one of the best stories that that you can you can like uh, overcome some 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 problems and be a main star of such a big promotion. Absolutely, yeah. His story is, I mean, he he's got it. He, he proved himself. Now everybody knows. I mean, he's known it for a long time, but now everybody knows. Uh, and how do we deal, deal with the stress before your fights? That's a good one. Um, I do a lot of, like, practice my mindfulness, um, like breath work, visual visualizing my fight and the walkout and everything leading up to it, you know, talking with my teammates and and knowing that the feelings will be there and not being surprised by them. I mean, you're getting into a fight. You're going to have your good days. You're going to have your bad days of training, but that's all part of it. It's all part of the process and all part of the journey. You can't have every day be a good day, you know, and you just have to take the feelings and feel them and accept them. And then just know that this is normal. This is you're nervous because this is what your body does. Fight or flight mode. Like you put anyone in there, everyone's going to have, your body's going to react. And if, as long as you're aware, you'll be just fine. And you are fighting in like, uh, in the, in this fight in big promotions so, so of course that there will be a stress and because the stress is because this is important for you or for any any other fighter so it's like the where something is important this there is obvious thing that there will be some stress but but, but maybe not the one 
like which is paralyzing you, but which which can give you some additional like motivation or like uh, maybe problem solving skills. Let's say. No, absolutely. Yeah, there's definitely fight fell fay, and it's I'll have a lot of friends and family there. Um, I like it. Like put the put the pressure on, and it's like because this is what we do. This is this is the business we're in. You know. You can't just ask for it to go away. It's going to be there and you got to want it. You got to want to be in those high pressure, high stakes situations because that's the only way you will succeed. You have to succeed in those situations. Otherwise, you you won't you won't advance. And when you are uh, like thinking about your life, if you were not an MMA fighter, who would you who would you think you would be? Um. I'd probably be doing some construction job right now. Um, some commercial construction, residential construction. Um, yeah, it's probably it. I'd probably be pretty depressed. <laughs> um, you know, not having a lot of purpose or passion. I would have to find that. I believe I would find that somehow, but this has definitely helped. And definitely like this is this is what I do now actually many many fighters are like uh, are saying that that MMA is great because uh, like they don't want to live this uh, like uh, 9 to 5 uh, job uh, and mm-hmm. uh, and life of course and and this is this is the the time that they are really like feel fully alive oh yeah this this i mean there's no other there's not a lot of things that you can do in this life that give you the feelings of a competition like fighting you know that's that's the real feeling of you're feeling everything you know some people would never want to feel that feeling it's not like an adrenaline junkie like people chase that adrenaline it's just like i mean you see people that just live the same boring mundane day-to-day life and they just look forward to the weekend and look into they don't have any excitement or goals or passions and and it's kind of sad to see and I, I did not want that to be me and to fall into that trap it seems like everybody falls into um it's just like I didn't I didn't want that to be me and I don't want it like I want to say I I tried you know everybody says they could have done something or do whatever but I'm gonna do it and if I make it I make it and if I don't at least I tried, but I know I know I'm capable of making it to the top of this. Uh, and also, uh, especially when you will have uh, more fights, like every fight and probably every fight cam- cam- camp is uh, is quite different. So it's also would it can be like the chapter of the books that from the in one fight for one fight you are like more focused on uh, something. In other fight, something else, and you of course are are much more more experienced. So it's like, um, like you said, it's not mundane life, but it, but it's like, it can be like a book. Yeah, absolutely. You said it. Yeah, every fight camp's a little different. You know, short notice fights, like oh, the weight cut. What can we do different with the weight cut this time? And who's the opponent? Oh my god, I'm fighting a, a guy that, you know, knocked out his last three opponents. Like. And I got to go into his home home area, like it's something like that. The what gets you a little bit nervous and scared. It it makes you work harder and do all the all the little things right. Uh, and uh, do you have a, a, outside of fighting? Do you have any any like hobby or passion that the uh, the thing that you would like to uh, that you are like to focus on when you are maybe in the training camp or even outside of it? Absolutely. I, I grew up in a small, like rural area. I graduated school with just 44 people in my graduating class around there. So I did a lot of hunting and fishing ever since I was a kid. And I've always been a fan of that. Um, I love like a, like a little hobby farm is what I grew up on. We got chickens, horses, dogs, cats, like deer running around. So hunting and fishing and just being out in the the country kind of is like it's my hobby and hanging out with friends there so out outdoor life outdoors yeah and uh, 
do you have a like bucket list, the list of the the things that you would like to do or accomplish uh, before before you die? Definitely, I do want to travel the world um, through fighting. It'd be kind of like it's just cool for that way. I mean, you get paid to go somewhere and fight. Like that's been some of my favorite experiences that I'll never forget is the the times I've gone to different states and and fought. Um, I do want to be a, a father one day. Um, and there's so many things. Skydiving would be cool. That's another bucket list thing. It's a little off topic for being a father, but, um, and have my own, um, uh, have my own place on my own land, kind of out in a, kind of a rural area like I grew up. That's, uh, that's three or four things I, I definitely want to have before I die. So so many dreams, m many goals. Yeah, that's the things to look forward to for sure. Uh, and I have uh, also uh, one last question. If you can learn one skill, but it is outside of MMA, what kind of skill would you like to learn and know? Yes. Um be more of like a be more like handy or like cons like more of a construction savvy carpentry savvy i I know some of my friends are <laughs> one of my friends he was didn't get good grades in school but i tell you he's the he's knows math and carpentry better than anyone i know and it's like something like that i i would like to be more savvy with Yes, this, this this kind of skills are definitely important, especially if yeah. if, if someone someone don't don't have it. Doesn't yeah, have it. save me some money, <laughs> it's less headache. Yeah, something like that. I got a little, I got some experience enough, but um, carpentry savvy and probably um, the stuff I'm working on is being more like mindful and taking care of uh, myself and being like a better person overall. That's another one. I think that's just a lifelong one. You can't just pick it up, but that's just, you got to go through life with it. Yes. It can be definitely a long, long journey. Oh, for sure. Uh, okay. Come on. So uh, many thanks for, for the conversation. Uh, I'm really, really like interested in, in your bouts, uh, in your uh, next bout. And I think that you can be uh, maybe even a future star of LFA. I hope that, that you will finish, finish uh, this fight and you will get another contract. Absolutely. Hopefully chase that LFA belt. That'd be cool too. That'd be really awesome.